So today's summary, we're going to look back at some of the multiplication skills we did and some of the flexible calculation we did with multiplication. So that'll be to start off with. Then we're going to have a look at reading train timetables and planning journeys, including one for a job interview and thinking how that context might affect the train that you catch. Um, so hopefully that will give you a really deep understanding. Uh, let's get going on that recap of those multiplication skills. So here we go. Let's recap some of those multiplication skills that we've looked at before. Um, 15 multiplied by 14. Um, now, a written method, what we'd really do is we'd break up the 15 into a 10 and a 5, the 14 into a 10 and a 4, and multiply all the parts together, and then add them up, which is shown by this area model. So this bit is the 10 by 10 bit, and so on. This, this is the 5 by 10 bit, and so on, and we, and we would add them all up. And so there's quite a lot of parts to that calculation. So I would add up those four numbers there, and that's really what I do in that calculation. Um, but there is a way I can play around with these numbers to change the calculation. Have a look at this one. If I split this 14 into two sevens, um, then I've got these two equal areas. And I'm going to move this yellow part all the way up here. So I'm going to double uh, the 15 um, to make it 30 by putting this piece all the way up here. And that will halve the 14. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So that yellow piece has gone there. So it was there, and now it's moved there. And so in total, I've got the same number of squares. That's the really important part. I doubled the 15 to get to 30, and I halved the 14 to get to 7. So now I've got an area model, which is 30 multiplied by 7. Now there, suddenly, I've only got one calculation to do. 30 times 7, and how many squares? It's 210. Um, a different calculation technique. Let, let's say I was doing 24 multiplied by 18. Um, now, I've got a suggestion for you here. What I would probably do there instead is think, well, I'm going to round the 18 to 20. So I'm going to make that a bit longer. And I'm going to do 24 multiplied by 20 first. And so this whole area now is 480 squares. And then I just have to think, well, how many... Uh, of those 480 squares are in this extra bit, which doesn't show me, which shows me 20 lots of 24 rather than 18 lots. And I'm going to subtract this part here. So that, of course, will be two lots of 24. So I'm going to take away 48 from that 480. And that will leave me with 432. Now, again, this principle, how do we play around with numbers to make calculation easier or different? So I can see different ways. So 35 multiplied by 18, I've written it twice. Um, because I'm going to see if we can we're going to see if we can see that in a couple of different ways. But pause the video. Can you think of two different ways to have a go at doing that calculation? OK, well, let's have a look. I'm going to show you my favourite one, which I have to say, I think, is this one. Double the 35 to make it 70. Half the 18 to make it 9. 70 times 9? 630. The answer must be 630. Now, the other thing that you can do is 35 multiplied by 20 is 700. I think 35 multiplied by 10 is 350, and then double that, 700. And then I would just have to think, well, 18 lots of 35 is 2 lots of 35 less than 700. So, of course, 630. Okay, so let's have a go at these questions. Um, I want you to rank them by difficulty. So which question do you think is harder? Which one's easier? Why? Which different strategies can you use? Again, you don't need to necessarily be able to answer all the questions, but have a look. Which one's harder? Which one's easier? Which techniques are useful? Um, pause the video and have a think about that. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the different calculation strategies that could be used. Um, so there are all the answers, um, but let's see if we can unpick some of them. So for 35 multiplied by 16, I like using that doubling and halving strategy to make it 70, a multiple of 10, um, multiplied by 8, because of course a two-digit number here, but if I halve it, it becomes a single-digit number. Um, so many fewer calculations now. Um, this was one that was sent through, I remember, uh, and it puzzled me at first. Um, 25 times 24, and I thought, oh, there's lots of steps there. And then I actually realised, well, if I double the 25, uh, that would be 50, and half the 24, it's 12. And if I did it again, I'd actually have 100 times 6. So it'll actually just be uh, 600. Um, now, 25 times 19, I like doing that by doing 25 times 20, which is 500. And then thinking it's 25 less. 
Whereas I didn't find a really helpful way of changing the 32 multiplied by 24. So for me, this one was the most challenging of them. So today is all about interpreting train timetables, planning journeys, and thinking how that might be affected by the kind of situation that you're in. Um, so hopefully this is going to be super useful today. Um, let's have a look at this train timetable. This, this train uh, is a train timetable for this journey from Tinford, our first station, calling it Denley, Garbury, and finishing at Penfield. So here are all the train times. So for example, we can see that trains leave Denley at 6.42, 8.03, 9.27, and 10.54. Um, and then we can see the length of these journeys. So for example here, let's have a look. This is a fourth train. It leaves Tinford at 10.32. It gets into Garbury at 11.37, and so on. Um, so here's three questions for you to get get yourselves going. Question one, at what time does the first train finish its journey? Number two, at what time does the third train of the day leave Tinford? And three, how long does the second train take to get from Tinford to Penfield? Pause the video and have a go at those three questions. Okay, let's have a look at them. Um, so here's the first train and you can see the times that the first train calls at all the stations. Now just note that sometimes children can think that this is the first train here. This isn't a, the times for one train journey. These are the, the times that the different that the trains leave, different trains leave from Tinford. This is one journey calling at all the stations. So what time does the, it finish its journey? Well of course 7.54. And the third train of the day, and this time the question is at what time does the third train of the day leave Tinford? So I'm looking for Tinford now, 9.05. And question three, how long does the second train take to get from Tinford to Penfield? Tinford, it sets off at 7.40 and it arrives at 9.15. I would probably think 20 more minutes from 7.40 gets me to 8 o'clock and another hour and 15 minutes. So in total, it's an hour and 35 minutes. Okay. Do you agree or disagree with these two statements? So the first statement on the left, all the train journeys take the same length of time. So each journey from Tinford to Penfield is the same length as is each other one. Is that true or false? The second one, the shortest part of the journey between these neighboring stations is always between Tinford and Denley. Is that always the shortest part? Pause the video and have a look at those two questions. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, it would seem to make sense that all the journeys would take the same length of time because we're going from the same station to the same station. But it's not always true because sometimes it might be because of other trains coming in or, I don't know, maybe different times of the day. Sometimes journeys from one station to another are faster and sometimes slower. Let's have a look at this one. Train 2, well, it leaves at 7.40, it gets in at 9.15, so that's an hour and 35 minutes. But train 3 is actually faster. It only takes an hour and 31 minutes. Um, so actually all the train journeys don't take the same length of time. Now, the shortest part of the journey is always between Tinford and Denley. Well, to have a look at that, I thought, well, the longest journey, the longest journey time between Tinford and Denley is this one, 23 minutes time. Now, are any of the journeys faster than that? Uh, well, let's have a look. Well, the shortest one from Denley to Garbury is 41 minutes. So, so that isn't. Uh, and, and then the, the shortest journey from Garbury to Penfield is 27 minutes. So yeah, it is true that the shortest part of the journey is always between Tinford and Denley. Now let's have a look at this same train timetable. So Mrs. Patel is a teacher and she lives in Denley. Mrs. Patel has a job interview at a school which is a 10 minute walk from Garbury train station and the interview starts at 9am. Oh, I wonder if she's nervous. Well, which train should Mrs. Patel catch from Denley train station? Uh, pause the video and have a think about this one. Okay, well, let, let's have a look. So um, what we know is that she has got to get to Garbury and um, and we know that the interview starts at nine o'clock. So let's have a look at those trains. So 8.47, that's before, isn't it? So, so let's say this one. So we might think the 8.03 from Denley arrives in Garbury at 8.47 a.m. So if she has a 10 minute walk, she'll arrive at 8.57 a.m. And that is before the time of her interview. So is this a good expected time of arrival for Mrs. Patel's 9 a.m. interview? I have to say, I don't think it is. Because if I had a job interview and I was only going to arrive 
three minutes before it started. Actually, I think I would get on the earlier train. Um, I think I'd much rather get there too early and have a little bit more time. So I could get to Garbury in plenty of time. I could walk up. I could think about what I was going to say. And then I think when it came to the time for my interview, I'd feel a little bit more confident. Just imagine if that train was a few minutes late. For today's task, click on the blue link underneath the video. And um, we've got these questions around this timetable. So you can see the theme of the northwest of England, Macclesfield, Poynton, Cheekleheim, Stockport, Manchester, Piccadilly. So there's questions about this, this train uh, timetable there. So have a go at those with task A. Uh, task B, um, one of the questions is number four. The answer to a question is 23 minutes. What could the question be? So you're going to have to look at that timetable and think, what could the question be? There are different possible questions there. Um, now for the extend task, I need to explain this one a little bit. So sometimes you need to look at more than one train timetable to plan out a journey. So let's say, for example, if you're going from Crewe, you could get directly to Stafford or Wolverhampton or Birmingham but you might not be able to get to each place. There might not be a train from, let's say, from Crewe to Dudley. So what you might need to do is think, well, I can get from Crewe to Wolverhampton or to Stafford, and then I can get a train from there to the next place. So the question is, Helen lives in Crewe. She's travelling to Cannock. Now, bear in mind that there isn't a direct train from Crewe to Cannock. So you're going to have to think about what you're going to do for that one. Now, again, I'm going to leave you to work it out from there. Uh, so good luck with that um, as normal. See you again tomorrow. Thanks for joining in.